Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part three of our three-part series testing AR500 Armors level 3A panels. Today we have their level 3A rigid panel. This rigid level 3A panel uses a steel core. There's no Kevlar inside this. It has their Paxcon coating on the outside of it. We're going to see what this is going to stop. Let's get set up. So first up, we're going to test some 5-7 rounds. I don't think they're going to go through, but we'll test them anyways. We're going to shoot SS-190, Elite Ammunition's Law Enforcement Load, and their T-6B. Again, we're at 10 feet. We're going to use clay as the backer because we're not sure if it's going to go through or not. Again, SS-190 first, then the Law Enforcement Load, then T-6B. Impact velocity on the law enforcement load was 2,005 feet per second. Impact velocity was 106 feet per second, which is close to by. That's completely good. So here is our SS-190. Here is the law enforcement load. And here is the T-6B. Unfortunately, no pass-through. There's some little dimples on the back here. The biggest one is on the T-6B but it didn't go through. So we couldn't get a pass through on the pistol. How about if we try the exact same three rounds out of our PS90 with a 16 inch barrel? Again, SS-190 first, then the law enforcement load, then the T6B. Twenty six twenty nine on the law enforcement load. You can get one off the T six B. So here is our SS one ninety. Here is our law enforcement load and the T six B. We got a nice dimple there from the T six B, but it stopped it. Law enforcement load stopped it as well. Now the SS-190 load, it actually penetrated. The bolt itself didn't penetrate, but the slug of steel that it knocked out did. And you can see the little hole right there. Let's dig that out. So that's exactly what it did. That is the plate that it punched a perfect circle out of and poked in there. Now let's try some of that exotic 9mm. We'll shoot the Fort Scott first, then the Civil Defense next. We'll use our CZ Evo since it has the longest barrel. Let's see what we can do. Impact velocity on the Civil Defense was 2351. I pulled the shot on the Fort Scott to the left a little bit, that's why we didn't get a reading. I'll annotate what we got off of it in a separate chrono shot, but there was our impact. Our civil defense was over here. We were a little close to our 5.7 there, but no pass through. There's getting to be some, some dimples in the plate, but no pass through. How about the original PDW? We've got our M1 carbine. This is an inland manufacturer. We've got some 110 grain full metal jacket by PPU. We're gonna step back to about 15 feet for this test. Impact velocity was 1,851 feet per second. So our M1 carbine impact was right here. Again, no pass through. There's a nice bump there, but no pass through. We've gotta have something that's gonna go through this plate. 
Man, this plate will not give up. This is way above the rating for the plate, but it's kind of got me wondering what your SBR length ARs can do against body armor. We have some ZQI M855 ball, and we have some of the Carl Gustav 62 grain steel core stuff. Well, let's see what those can do. We'll first try the M855 ball. If we get a penetration, there's no point in testing the other stuff. We step back to about 15 feet for this test. This M85 has a 10 inch barrel on it. Impact velocity was 24, 96. So here is our impact with the M855 ball. And unfortunately, we have a pass through there. Blew a hole clean through that plate. Now again, this is well above the rating for level 3A, but I wanted to see what a short barrel rifle length barrel would do. We'll have to see if we can find the bullet in that hole later. So how about a supersonic 300 blackout? I'll annotate what we've got for velocity on this because we don't have the chronograph today. We are at about 12 feet. Good to go. So our impact was right there. You can see all the fragments that this plate has been collecting through our test. And actually, it stopped it. There's a dimple there. But it didn't go through. Cool. Alright, I got one more caliber to test against this hard plate. Keeping up with the theme of short barrel rifles, how about a 10 inch AK 47? I've got an M92 PAP SBR here. I have some Chinese steel core as the first round. And some Golden Tiger as a second round. Both are full metal jackets. The Chinese is steel core. The Golden Tiger is lead core. Step back to about 12 feet. So here is our steel core shot. We look close to the edge, we're still on the plate. And here was our lead core shot. Fortunately, the steel core shot penetrated right through. Looked like it did have a hard time because of the way it broke through the plate. The lead core broke the plate, but I don't think it penetrated all the way through because there's just a tiny crack there. There's a little dimple there. We'll have to maybe see if there's lead in there. But right here, you can see the uh, steel core inside of that. So we're back in the cave to check out our 3A hard plate. And unlike the Kevlar, we won't need a knife to cut into this because the coating has served its purpose. Just to show you how cool this Paxcon Linex coating is, look at all the fragments that that stuff catches. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in front of this plate that it had caught into the table, but it does a really good job at catching these fragments. Really impressed with this coating. Great idea. So let's look at our plate. Those last two 762 by 39 out of that SBR, those were well above the plate rating. There was the hole in, from the steel core. There's still more pieces falling off this. This is the lead core. I don't think it I don't think it went through. There's just a little poke there, so it just must have almost had enough. There was our M855. I dug that out of the clay. It was about two inches down. Here's remnants. This is part of the plate that it broke off there. And there's a couple of the fragments. Here was the steel core 762 that I recovered. It was about an inch and a half in the clay. Just busted that up. As far as these other shots, 
There was our SS190 from the PS90. Interesting that the steel core, a little bit of it's still in there, but it poked that little hole in there. Here is the SS190 from the pistol. Here is the Fort Scott munitions from the CZ. Here was the civil defense from the CZ. It left a dimple there, but it didn't go through. This is the supersonic 300 blackout. I think it left the biggest dimple without penetrating. Here is our T6B from the PS90, for the law enforcement load from the PS90. The M1 carbine, that left a pretty good dimple too, but didn't go through. There was the LEO load from the pistol and the T6B. They got a little dimples there, but no penetration. All in all, for such a lightweight plate that's designed to meet level 3A specifications, this is definitely a step above 3A. It's not level 3, we know that. I mean, it couldn't stop 2200 feet per second, 762 by 39, but it's not designed to stop that. It's designed to stop most of your common pistol threats and I mean it stopped SS190 from the pistol and any other pistol loads we shot at it even with the longer barrel the uh, ones that had no the ones that had no trouble penetrating the 3A hybrid couldn't make it through this plate really impressed that it stopped the 300 blackout as well so this pretty much concludes our testing of AR-500 Armor's level 3A offerings. I would say in order of protection abilities, the rhyme leg is at the bottom, your hybrid's right in the middle, and your steel plate is obviously the cream of the crop. Obviously for concealment, your, three, your rigid 3A is not going to give you that flexibility that the soft armor stuff does, but if you want that extra protection without stepping up to level 3, it's something definitely to consider. Thanks again AR-500 Armor for sending these plates for us to test to the extreme and beyond. I have a little more real estate maybe on this plate and a couple of the other soft panels. So if you want to see something that I didn't highlight in any of these videos, drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. I really appreciate all the views and comments. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. So here were some of the fragments that this plate actually stopped. This is the Fort Scott Munitions solid copper load. This is one of EA's all copper load. It kind of looks like T6 based on discoloration, but it could be the law enforcement one. Here's another one of those all copper elite ammunition 5.7 loads. Here was that SS190 from the PS90 that almost made it through. Here's SS190 from the pistol. Mangle that guy all the heck. There's aluminum core. There's the steel penetrator.